Hello, Info360 students. Welcome to our very first online class. Um, tonight, we're gonna, I'm going to be walking you through assignment three. Um, each part, in part one, we're going to be creating a voting booth, um, which is a user form that's pretty simple. Um, we're going to have three options. Um, I noticed, I heard on the uh, radio that we have three candidates for the Cincinnati mayor, John Cranley, Rob Richardson, and Yvette Simpson. I don't have any opinion on who you should vote for, but I'm gonna create a user form that allows somebody to select who they wanna vote for and click a button to select place vote. Um, we'll also have a cancel button um, if they wanna bail out. And uh, behind the scenes, I'm going to create a spreadsheet that um, when the user places their vote, we're going to populate who they voted for, along with a timestamp, the date and time that they voted, and a sequence number, um, which I think might provide like an audit trail of, of the voting sequence. Uh, I have no idea if that's how I actually um, voting software works. I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. In order to tally the results, I'm going to create a pivot table, just in Excel, not in the code, um, and a pie chart to go along with it. So let's go ahead and get started and open Excel. I'm using Excel 2016, which might look a little bit different if you're using Excel 2010 on campus. Um, or Excel 2013, but uh, everything that we do that I do tonight will be compatible with Excel 2010 as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is open a blank workbook, and I'm in, immediately going to save. So I'll save as um, uh, assignment three with my name. And of course, I need to save as a macro enabled workbook. Um, I'm at home, so I already have the developer menu. Of course, if you're at home, I mean on campus, of course, you would have to add that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start to prepare the spreadsheet. I'll name the sheet Voting Booth. And I will. Um, create three different columns for sequence number, which will be just a, a number starting from one all the way down to however many um, votes are cast. And I'll add a timestamp, which will use the now command to populate the date and time. And I'll add the candidate's name as well. Do a little bit of simple formatting. And let's go ahead and um, get into our code. So I'm going to go to Developer and Visual Basic. And the first thing I'm going to do is insert a user form. And I'm going to add a label, which is just a, a heading. And I'll type, place your vote for Cincinnati mayor. And do something a little bit, uh, I have to, you should have your properties on the uh, left-hand side already. Um, I had to right-click and show it for some reason. Um, under the caption, it shows what, what I entered. Um, I'm going to do something different that we didn't do last week. I'm going to auto-size the label, which will make it exactly as long as it needs to be. Uh, 
um, in the user form, I think I'm going to, uh, to jazz things up, I'm going to add a background color. Um, we also didn't do this last week. I'm going to click on the palette, and I think I'll add a, a reddish-orange to the background. And now I'm going to add my option buttons for each of the three candidates. So I'm going to click on the option button. And uh, option one, I'm going to give it the name Option Cranley for John Cranley. And the caption, I'm going to put the candidate's name, John Cranley. And um, next I'm going to copy and paste that option button and do my best to line it up underneath the first button. And I'll name the second one option uh, Richardson. And I will put the caption with the candidate's name. And then I'll paste again and line it up under the other two. I'll name the button Option Simpson. And add the caption Yvette Simpson. And next I'm going to add a uh, two command buttons, one for place your vote and a second one for cancel. Um, your uh, toolbox options may look a little bit different than mine because of, again, of uh, Excel 2016, but all the, all the buttons are there and if you hover over them, um, you can see what they are. So I'm going to click on command button and I'm going to drag the shape onto the form and I will change the caption to um, place your vote or just plain place vote I'll copy that and paste it to have a second the reason I copied and pasted it rather than clicking a new one is it makes it the exact same shape and size and but now instead of the uh, caption place vote I'm gonna Put the caption cancel. So I'm sort of done with the uh, design of the form and I'm going to start with the easy code. I'm going to double click on the cancel button and that'll take me into the code that will execute when the user clicks on um, the cancel button and um, for cancel I always use the code unload and the name of the user form which is user form one. And uh, give myself a little space here. And I'll go back to uh, the user form. And next I'll double click on the place vote command button and get to the code associated with, with that. So there's a number of things we're going to have to add to this code. Um, when the user clicks place vote, we want to add the option that they selected over in the spreadsheet to the next empty row in column C. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a line of code to find out how many rows have already been populated. So luckily we've used that line of code a number of times. I have it out on the home page of Canvas. So I'm going to go out to Canvas and scroll down to my last row command. And I'm going to copy that and paste it into my code. And I'm going to go above that and I'm going to define that variable with a dim. So I'm going to dim last row as long
And now I want to um, enter a sequence of if statements for uh, each of the three option buttons. So remember last week when we um, used option buttons, we um, notice the name of each of them. So back on the user form for John Cranley, the name of uh, this option button is option Cranley and it's either true or false. By default it's false. Um, when the user selects it, it equals true. Um, so I'm going to type some code. If option Cranley is equal to true, then I'm going to populate row three of the next empty column, which is last row plus one. I'm, I'm sorry, the last empty row. So I'm going to set my uh, row number as last row plus one. Since we have headings, we start with row two. And the column number is going to be three because um, over in my spreadsheet, I have the candidate name in column C. So that's going to equal the candidate's name, John Cranley. I could do a sequence of else and then kind of nest them, but uh, I think I'm just going to make it kind of easy on the code and uh, copy and paste this twice for the other two candidates. So if option Richardson is equal to true, then I'm going to populate the next empty cell in row three with the name Rob Richardson. Paste again. I hit control V there to paste and I'm going to select if option Simpson is equal to true then I'm going to populate column C with Yvette Simpson. The next thing I want to do is if um, the user doesn't select any of the three, I want to detect that. So I'm going to um, add another if statement to evaluate if all three are false. I'm going to just add a message box that says, uh, please select a candidate or cancel. So I'm going to do if option Cranley is equal to false and option Richardson is equal to false and option, whoops, option Simpson is equal to false, then message box, please select a candidate or click cancel. And um, I'm going to add an else for this one. So if they, if any of those three are true rather than false, then I know that they selected a candidate and I'll go ahead and populate the other two columns. So I want to put in a timestamp and a sequence number. So I'll do cells last row plus one, comma two. That's the uh, middle column is equal to now. So that's going to put the date and time in there. And I'll populate the first column. Uh, my cat is meowing in the background. Sorry if you can hear that. Um, so the first column, I want to put a sequence number. 
So I'm just going to type a seq dash and concatenate whatever um, row we are on. The reason I didn't put a plus one there is we have a, a heading. So the fir very first entry, I want to type seq-1, and I want to add to it each time. Um, I don't need to add the row below where we are. Um, so I'm going to stop here for now and uh, go out, and I'm going to add the button to um, execute the code associated to show the user form. Um, and then I'm going to add a few entries, and then I'm going to eventually come back here and add one more line of code. But first I'm going to go out here. Under the Developer menu, I'm going to click the Insert icon. And remember for the uh, user forms, rather than using a regular button, we want to use the Active X Control menu and click a button, Command button, under that menu. And I'm going to double click on that to get to the code that executes. And um, we always add the code name of the user form dot show, which simply just shows, pops up the user form. Now I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet. And um, on the properties of the command button for the caption, I'm going to change it to vote for Cincinnati mayor. And uh, in order to execute it, I have to click design mode to get out of design mode so that uh, when I click this button, it actually runs. So I'm going to click it and I get my user form and cross my fingers and hope it works. I'm going to vote for one of the candidates and it shows up. I'm going to vote for another one. So for each candidate, uh, it's adding the timestamp, it's adding a sequential number, and um, adding the candidate's name. I'll click Cancel, run it again, see what, I'm going to test my error sequence, so if they don't vote for anybody, I get an error message, and it does not add an entry. If I click Cancel, it gets me out of there. All right, so everything seems to be working fine. Um, so now I'm going to add uh, my pivot table. And I'm going to do this in just plain old Excel. I'm not going to um, add any code for this except to one thing that I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'm going to select column C and I'm going to insert pivot table. And um, it recognizes that my range is column C. I'm just going to add it to this existing worksheet. So I'm going to um, add it uh, to the top right part of the worksheet. So where it said existing worksheet, I clicked um, cell J1. And now um, when I get my pivot table fields, I only have uh, one field candidate, and I'm going to add that to the sum value, which is going to give me a count. And I'm also going to add it to the row to uh, give me the name of the candidate. Um, I'll do a little formatting here. And I'm also going to add a little um, pie chart. So I'm going to insert and go over to the pie chart. And I'm going to do a little formatting here.
And whenever I have a pie chart, I like to um, add data labels, and then I like to format the data labels. Your interface may look a little bit different here, but um, I want to click on the category name. We already have the value in the table, um, but I like to add the percentage. And once we have the uh, category names, we don't, we don't need this legend anymore. Okay, so let's add a few more votes. And notice that when I add the votes, so I'll vote for John Cranley a bunch of times. Notice that it doesn't it doesn't increment the pivot table. So that's kind of annoying. Um, by default, um, pivot tables do not refresh. So I'm going to add a line of code. And my friends on the internet have helped me with this. So I've already Googled uh, refresh pivot table VBA. And I found this handy one line of code active workbook dot refresh all so I'm gonna add that um, line of code down here um, so whenever we add a new entry in the um, in the spreadsheet we're also gonna refresh the workbook so let me go back and test that. So I'll add a, a few more votes. And now we have an update. We had 17 before, now we have 27. Um, just an FYI, if you add this uh, pivot table early on, um, the uh, count rows or whatever what do we call that last row function does count the um, pivot table entries as populated lines so um, I was already past that by the time I um, added the pivot table so it, it continued to work fine but um, if you add it that right away you might have uh, some blank lines leading up to that okay so um, Hope you've enjoyed part one of the uh, assignment. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now and uh, check back with you in part two.